Yo, it's me again. This is Random Breakout and you know the drill. Oh, last week's... No, not last week. Last recordings. No. Man. It's the second time in a row this dude has tried to scare me into taking this off. I won't be so sweet, mister. I can see you. I can see through your every move. Huh. Bellflower. And there we go. I mean, sure, melon bun isn't that good of cookie, but it's like she has the fire blast bar, which is, you know, pretty, pretty useful in my opinion. So I'm just gonna pick her. One, two. There we go. By the way, a new update on the Millennial Tree today. We'll be coming out with a new update on, I think, what's it? The 13th or something? But well, at least they're, they're, they're giving us millennial tree tweaks now. I've been asking for it for like months at this point. <laughs> oh, I'm just glad. It's not like I want to soon to use like millennial tree in the meta so much as I just want to see his fancy animation skills, to be honest. And maybe complete his trial. Of course, it's like even though I have the dude at about almost max level for both his pet and the guy himself. I still can't get diamond. Eh? Where's the. Eh? The boat just disappeared for a moment there. Alright. Oh, she makes a rather grunting sound when she crouches down. That's cool. And fishies. 49,005. Oh, I see. The extra destruction points came from the chest in the middle down there. Alright. Just pick through this. And go the furthest for the rainbow gem. Multi color gems. I don't... I'm not into that astrology kind of stuff, you know, like energy. Spiritual energy? Was it? If I'm not wrong. But I do like pretty stones, you know. Like tiger's eye. Or like if they're just shiny. I just like holding things a lot. But I don't really believe in the spiritual manifestation kind of stuff. It's like, I guess maybe it works. I don't really know. Like, it just doesn't sound very believable, like, chakra is just, hmm. I mean, as long as you aren't scamming people with it, and it's fine, you know. Usually, and usually that's my biggest problem with most, um, kind of like beliefs or like, kind of movements like that, you know. It's because there's always a bunch of people who will just take advantage of this new thing to go after and like, trick gullible people into buying overpriced stuff, claiming that this, you know, so-called chakra bracelet that costs like a thousand dollars or something will help you purify the air in your body and maybe like i don't know lessen your chances of getting cancer i mean not so much cancer but, but the rest is probably like that you know it really reminds me of all the manosphere stuff i talked about in my last video the one where a lot of times the people i mean as in like, a lot of the highest speaking people that sell the courses there it's not that they don't know what they're doing, they do know that what they're selling is overpriced and they are just literally scam you out of it. And just very what do you call it? Uh, persuasive salesmen or salespeople, you know? I mean it's like in hindsight it seems really obvious I suppose. But if you're in the middle of it, it doesn't really stick up to you that much, you know? Because it's something valuable and this is like a one-time thing. You know? And it's like, this could have so much benefits if you just bought it now instead of later. This kind of reminds you of crypto, right? You know, if you just hold all your, what, your tokens or whatever, you just wait. At some point, you know, you, you earn a lot more money when the, when the whole, like, token you're investing in just goes viral. I mean, it's just risky investments, you know, risky investments. It's like going for the lottery, except, yeah, it, it's just like going for the lottery, you know? Except that it probably costs a lot more to participate. Mm. Okay, please, wait. Did we? Yes, okay. I thought we would miss this whole down portion of mm -mm, map roots down here. So there's that. Eh! I swear I pressed the jump button just now, that wasn't me. I don't think it really had that. That's odd. But then again, my device is also quite old, so there's that. I do have quite a lot of technical problems on this thing, you know? Like half the time my Google Drive doesn't work when I'm trying to upload it. 
so I can just download the video on my computer. I'm slightly annoying, you know, because I have to keep on retrying and retrying, and usually it takes hours to upload something like this. Uh, which is annoying, yeah? I don't actually play games a lot, I'd say. I mean, I probably used to back in the day, and switch games a lot. But now it's like, I'm too busy to do that, you know, like, too occupied, so I don't go look for stuff. Like I do like games though, especially games with a story. I mean, I like gameplay as much as any other guy does, but I also value the story a lot. I mean, so even if the game is kind of frustrating to play through, or a bit tedious, if it has a good story, I think, and a good plotline, I'll be willing to, you know, stick through to the end for it. If I had to give one example, it would probably be this game I played back in like, what, 2018 or 2019? I don't know man, it's like over half a decade ago, but I remember. Called Cats of Liquid. So basically, the controls weren't very, how do you call it, uh, intuitive. You know, if you don't mind me saying. I just got so upset with the game, you know, like, the character didn't move how I wanted it to be, sort of thing. And all sorts of issues just cropping up like that. Sometimes they like the controls like they were too low or too far away or they just wouldn't respond. And I end up like just <laughs> deleting that game and then reinstalling it after a while because I couldn't forget about it. Like three or four times, no kidding. But then I just got used to when I finished it. And now it's one of my most favorite games of all time. Now I can play through it with, you know, with my if with, with a little bit of difficulty and with my mediocre gaming skills. But I'm not stuck at it in in past like it was last time. Which is cool. Also, seeing as how we kinda of missed that little whole hidden map which just now, I think I'm just gonna try this again later. Hopefully we will get a HP potion this time. It's not great being stuck, yeah? Because what we all want is a little bit of distance, don't we? Hmm, 519. I wonder if we are able to reach the DF with this? No idea. I really do quite like the stage team though. It's bright and fun. You know, right? I am actually not sure how old high school is. <laughs> I mean, because I don't, I don't, I don't live in a country where, where high school is a thing. So there's that. Okay, what? And then there's also the fact that. Well, yeah, that's it. So I remember reading this Yuri manga lately. All right. Hot kitanai kimi ga something something something. I don't know. Basically, it's just wow, you know? How do you ever get a sense of like incongruity whenever you see someone's like character in a drawing? Like, you say, oh no, this guy is actually like 20 years old when they actually look 10 minutes. Not great, man, not great. Confuses me a lot. Especially in this like, whole Yuri thing I was talking about. You know, it's like two main characters, we're actually high schoolers, but I'm gonna tell you. The way they acted was like a lot of seasoned veteran adults in the uh, the, 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 the sex industry or something. But then like the way they looked was like elementary school children, you know? Like like how do you call it? 12, 13, 14 years old. It's kind of huh? It's a disturbing p I mean I do have my own kind of pension for psychological based series. You know, like I like I like seeing drama a lot, a lot. So it's just great if it's not a drama in a series. Mode. Of course, not too much, but if I had to say though, I actually think that I mean I don't I can't really find people that actually read web novels and stuff. So it's a bit of an unfortunate thing. I mean, as in I can't find people that read web novels around me. Not interested in like, reading all the stupid ones that I do. <laughs> I mean, I read all sorts. It's not like I have enough smarts to learn a second language or anything, so I can only read it. But luckily, there's a bunch of kind folks out there willing to, you know, translate or scan it for for poor little peasants like me. Eh? I mean, you no, know, it's good and all to buy the thing and support the author, but if I don't even know what I'm buying in the first place, it's a bit of an uh, issue. Hush. And if I had to say also, I mean, I, I read, I think, personally, I think I read quite, uh, how do you call it? 
I feel small genres except for romance. Romance is I don't really like romance. And like my standards for like romance uh novels or story extremely strict, yeah. So there's that. And then there's the fact that I also read like normal English. I mean I haven't done those in a long time. But they're cool. Like you'd be surprised what what are like some of the things people can come up with online. You know? I mean for all the uh, crap we have a sift room. There's a decent amount of actually really good stuff if you really look for it, yeah? Oh, I see. Last skill application, let's do it. Mm -hmm. It seems that I'm missing the potion. I don't really set us back that far, huh? Actually, let me do a double jump of this. One, two, there we go. Number four. Next combi. I see. Oh, this guy. What a guy. Not be decent. I mean, I'm not looking for... Oh, I want to look for speed, bro. Speed, speed, speed. Speed. Oh, hashtag blast, huh? Okay, let's take a look at what that means. Hashtag blast. Hashtag blast. Okay, B-L-A-S. Oh, no, no, with tags. Yes, with tags. What's the tag again? Hashtag blast. Where is it? Ah, here. Hi. Okay, it's at the end. Where's blast? There we go. Mmm, kiwi, pita, yeah, red bean, cookie moss, mm, not too bad, I suppose. I can take it. Alright, so let's just choose the chorus. And the chorus ain't half bad either, as the uh, cookie in itself. So let's do this. I mean, at first, there's still are uh, not very good ones in there, like pizza. I didn't understand why she's rated as blast mode, to be honest. Anyways, mmm. Um, Actually, I wonder what blast is supposed to mean. Like, is blast supposed to mean speed or not speed, that's for sure. But red bean is there. But lapon isn't. It's odd. I mean, no, uh, maybe my English, I mean, my English comprehension skills just aren't up to par, so there's that. You know, I used to think literature, and then I had to study, like, the Shakespeare's plays and whatever. I remember I was doing, like, what do you call it? The Merchant of Venice ones. Yeah, not bad. It wasn't a bad like, story or whatever. I actually think it was pretty interesting. I mean, you know, it's like... You could definitely see that our dear... Uh, oh my god, what was his name again? Oh no. I know his name started with V. Um, let's call him Mr. Merchant then. So like, we know that Mr. Merchant was just... She did like, act to uh, dog spit by everybody. Just because he was like a Jew and a merchant. And I mean, actually, you know what? It's, I kind of wonder if Shakespeare also had some kind of prejudice towards Jews. Since in this whole thing, he just portrays like Mr. Merchant as, you know, super money hungry and everything. I'm not sure, honestly. And then I remember there's this whole stuff about Mr. Merchant's daughter running away with like their. We throw the ring, honestly, and selling it for, I'm not sure, I think a monkey or whatever. And in the end, right, the, the, the kid just didn't even go back to her parents. I mean, her mom was dead, so Mr. Merchant was like, her soul father. So and then after, I think there was something that happened, that was along the lines of, uh, you know, you renounce your relations to your dad, you aren't a Jew anymore, you become like, an Christian or something, or English Christian. I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was definitely something like that. And so I just kind of found it like, wow, you know, you know? I mean, generally speaking, you know, when murdering people is a big no no. Yeah, but it's like our main character of the story and his, like, all his best mates or whatever kind of just took everything, like, Mr. Merchant had away from him. Like, it's not like Mr. Merchant had much other than his money and his and his like daughter since his wife's dead you know and i mean assuming by the way they treat him even when he's a merchant i don't i think that like, if like, mr merchant was without any sort of money at all like, i see just think he would be how do you call it uh, really bad you know like his conditions would definitely be much worse i guess then there's this sort of thing where you know how like um some people are just eating preferences due to their religion or whatever belief, you know? I think there was this one section where they just purposely just like mock the guy for, you know, doing his cultural stuff. I don't know, wearing certain clothing and eating certain foods. And it's a sort of like interesting... I actually quite liked it, honestly. 
I quite like that story. I mean, I've only ever like been told to study two Shakespeare plays, and I think that's the extent of freedom that I'll ever go in this lifetime. Because you know, I like reading stories, but a the language is too complicated for my P brain to understand. And B, I mean, yeah, I'm just too stupid, okay? I'm just too stupid. I do have to say though, Macbeth was the second Shakespeare play I had to study, at least learn about. And it's, you know, it's about Macbeth, you know, the guy. So basically, he just gets, how to put it? He gets jealous of like the king. He wants power, money, riches, fame, that kind of shit. So then one day he's coming back from a battle and then he meets a bunch of witches that tell him like, hey man, your fate is to be the king. And so Macbeth is like, seriously, my fate is to be the king? Serious? Okay. Then because of what the witches say, he proceeds to kill the king and assassinate all his uh, rivals for the throne and frame like the succession princess for like murder. I also think it's kind of funny. You know, if you think about it, if the witches had never told him about that whole prophecy of him being king in the first place, even, I don't think he would have ever like even tried to murder the king Duncan. You know, but then you could also say it's all like fated, I guess. But I'm pretty sure it just doesn't help that half the time, you know, the reason why Macbeth just did all this murdery just bloodlusty stuff all the time it was because the witcher said hey you can become this and so he thought it was okay to do it and you know I, and and you know Macbeth had a wife called Lady Macbeth and then there's this also very interesting part about how originally Macbeth didn't want to like actually do any money like, he was thinking about it after we just told him everything but he didn't actually want to do it you know like he liked the king he liked his place Sure, he wanted power, but everything was fine, you know, and murdering people up is bad, of course. And so his wife went to go and shame him into doing it. Like, are you a coward? Be a real man and, like, murder some royalty, baby. Because, you know, what is good or regicide if it doesn't confirm a man's muscul masculinity, huh? And I think it's also quite interesting. If, if without, without, like, Lady Macbeth's whole... Oh, um... You should go murder the king kind of stuff. If it wasn't from Lady Macbeth, Macbeth probably wouldn't even have done any of the stuff in the first place. Which is very interesting to me. So that's why it's like in my classes, you know, the poetry teacher I had, no, I mean literature teacher I had, a lot of times they said something about Lady Macbeth being portrayed as the third witch, as in, no, I mean the fourth witch, as in like, or she may not have been one of those evil people to go around and start doing weird things and give the prophecy. Like, surely her trying to go with Macbeth into murdering the king didn't help either. And it's like, there's still a different perspectives about this. I mean, you could say she's technically a fourth witch. Cause without her, this also probably wouldn't have had ever started. But if you think about it, in some ways, she's also much more, how do you call it? Uh, uh, redemptable, I would say, than Macbeth. Like, sure, you can put all the blame on, like, the wife, put all the blame on Lady Macbeth for goading her husband into it. But in the end, her husband did do it. Her husband was the one that did the murdering. And then it's like the only murder that was necessary was the one of taking Duncan. Mind you, not the murder of anybody else. And not only that, well, it wasn't even that. Maybe Macbeth who committed the murder. She went into the room and tried to kill me, the King Duncan. But then he saw the guy and he was like, you know, this dude reminds me of my father. I don't want to kill him. So that's why it's like sometimes thought like, you know, it's kind of unfair to Lady Macbeth and everything. Just think of her as this ultimate being of evil that also was one of the catalysts for this whole tragedy. Because you see, it's like Lady Macbeth didn't even do the killing, you know. She was hungry for power, she was really really bad, but she didn't actually do anything horrendous. Not only that, right? She also just... Uh, it's, she didn't ask Macbeth to kill all those other people he did. I'm telling you, that's for sure. Like, Mr. Macbeth just went on a killing spree, you know, for no reason. Cause he went insane and saw like the ghosts of his victims or something. And it's like, you really can't blame Lady Macbeth for that. Only that it's like, oh, she herself may not have committed murder. She also did feel guilty about it. Like, so guilty to the point I think she actually died from getting bit ridden due to her... What was it? 
a good, yeah. She was just ashamed of like the part she had taken in this thing. And then in the end, she just went crazy, you know, muttering to herself. I kind of saw it. And then she just died in the end. And I just think it's very interesting because it's like, at the start of the story, it's uh, it's like a complete reverse of roles. In the start of the story, Lady Macbeth is the dominating one in the relationship. Like, she's the one who wants to keep distance. She's the one who controls, you know, the emotion, the affection, distance in this relationship. And Macbeth is the one who goes around mailing his wife letters and saying, My dearest wife, I want to see you, and asking her for opinions and everything. But towards the latter half of the story, when Macbeth, you know, goes insane after he murders the king and everything, he is, is the one instead who starts forging this distance from Lady Macbeth instead of Lady Macbeth initiating all that uh, loss of contact herself. Uh, so I guess it's also very interesting, you know, how there can be like, such a reversal. I'm not really sure how they could change, but at the same time, it's kind of funny, yeah. Because in the end, you know, when like, Lady Macbeth dies, Macbeth isn't even that sad. But in the beginning of the story, Macbeth is all, I love you, my wife, I can't live without you. I need, mean, I need your opinion on this. Something, something, something. Stuff like that. Okay, it may have been a bit exaggerated, but you get what I mean. And then I remember, I, I don't really like Macbeth. As in like, I didn't really have a, how do you call it? A big liking to the story Macbeth by Shakespeare. I mean, I don't hate it. It's not a bad thing. I think it's okay. It's good. Yeah, it's great. I just, I guess it's just not my type. There's a lot of drama and everything, sure, but... I guess it's just really not there, you know. I think what might have turned me off honestly was like one of the characters in the book was this guy named Banco, you know. And he was meant to be like the exact polar opposite to uh, our main character Macbeth, you know. Like he was gallant, brave, kind. He did everything with honor and dignity. He would never betray his lineage. Never uh, even dare to think of committing regicide, you know could stand against like dark forces of evil or something and honestly it's like sure I don't I, he's like he's a good guy yeah but for some reason I just found that kind of boring like I know that he's meant to be a foil to our main characters like bad decision making evilness and like what he could have been but at the same time also it feels a bit weird cause there's just this super perfect guy compared with our very very flawed MC and she sounds right with some part of me, you know. I like Macbeth and Lady Macbeth, that's for sure. Then, but I don't like the whole Banco thing. And there's all this stuff about, I don't know, somebody's defined right to be like, uh, rule of the kingdom or something. Not a big fan of her either. Like, I know it's just a thing, a thing, but eh, it's not fun, you know, fun stuff. Hmm, okay, let's, okay, we've made it to the stage, that's great. One, two, there we go. Number seven. That's great. Bellflower. Lady, here you are. Thank you for the blast mode speed and distance points. Very kind of you, my lady. I quite appreciate it. Now, if only my luck could, you know, cooperate with me and... Alright, just not... Just not in half bad. He's good, yeah? He's meta. Relay matter that is. Not chestnut, right? I think he reminds me of that story of like the little match girl. You know, it's the little match girl. I'm not sure if you guys know, but for me, it's like this childhood thing that I've read all the time in the past. And when I was younger, I kind of just read it and I was like, sure, okay, I guess. And because it's like, it's not like the story really had any, you know, good defined morals or like any other, how do you call it, uh, popularized, um, a uh, fairy tale would have, you know, not like Snow White where you know, you're supposed to be mad. Many months, man, you must, you know, have mercy on people. Don't get jealous or whatever. Don't try to kill your kids, your snake kids for that reason. That kind of stuff. And to that end, it's like, I just remember reading a story and going like, eh, okay, let's see. You know? So basically, the, the, uh, the Little Match Girl is a story, I can't remember from exactly where. It's basically about this poor kid who's as in literally poor as in poverty you know poor kid who's stuck out in the snow selling matches so then she goes from house to house trying to sell matches but you see she only has a limited amount of matches left i think about three and because she keeps on getting colder and colder and nobody wants to buy her matches or let her into their house so what she has to do is that every time she makes a father and she really can't stand it anymore 
she lights up a match. And then as she lights up the match, she also gets a vision of like the things she would wish for at a Christmas party, you know? For example, like a Christmas tree or presents. Yeah? Or like when she stares through a window and then she lights a match just outside, she thinks of the way that she could also eat all this scrumptious dinner, if only. And, but it's just basically like a super realistic hallucination every time she lets a match. And then at some point, she has to reach the last match, right? I mean, nobody wants to let her in. It's cold out. All the restaurants or whatever have, have already closed. Nobody wants to let her into their doors. And so she takes out her last match. You know, she sits by the side and then she lights it up. And she covers it with her hands and she like treasures it. And with this la last match, what she uh, envisions is basically her grandma. As in a warm house with a dinner, with Christmas presents, with her grandma waiting there for her. And then compared to the other scenes, this one is actually depicted in the picture book I remember as like being golden, you know. And after that, it kind of just ends there. Like the story just ends there. I mean, they don't explicit, they don't explicitly say I, they f she froze to death, I think. Or maybe they just omitted that out of the book I read, which wouldn't be half surprising to be honest. But I mean, you can, I can pretty, you can pretty much infer that she's dead. Like, what you can take the last scene to mean? Like some people say, you know. Like the last scene of her in her grandma's house and being at home and being finally happy, you know, and like talking to her grandma, even though there's actually no one there, and all she is doing is just lighting up a match for no reason. Well, it's just. Oh. You could say that was her delusion, I guess. She just lost it in her final moments, you know. She wanted, she longed for warmth and her original home, and her mom, and food, and Christmas, and presents and love so much that as she load up her last as she lit up her last match and I mean it could also take matches to symbolize hope I suppose. She lit up her last hope, the one thing that kept her warm. As it faded away she dreamt of, you know, her happiness. And that was what she thought of as she died. Her happy ending. And there's also uh, the viewpoint there. This actually isn't a delusion. What she's seeing in that last scene when she lights up that last match is actually real. It's actually grandma who is waiting for her in heaven as an angel. And you see, because now the girl is dead, so well, she goes up to join her grandma in heaven and she lives there with her happily ever after. And the reason why she's talking to her grandma is because she's actually dead. Because she's actually an angel and welcoming, welcoming um, the little match girl. I mean, it's a cute story, I suppose, but. You gotta say. It's really like one of the stories where just look at the new girl. I don't think there's much meaning to this thing because I mean it's just tragedy all the way through. You know, you see this poor girl stuck on the streets, and nobody wants to save her, so she freezes to death, and then that's it. The end. And then the ending is a whole other beast of its own, to be honest. Let's take Chess Joker. She has a what do you call it? They have a what do you call it? Speed boost, yes, speed boost, speed treasure. So I'm gonna be taking that. Thank you very much. Alright. You know, I mean my method aura would really do good around here, but I've learned my lesson from the last time. Yeah? I mean you know it's like scammy ones. Oh, a shame on you. Scammy twice for me. Scam me like five times in a row and and at some point I'm just gonna have to develop a inbuilt body instinct to just not press the just button every time I see a scan. You know, like Bell Papa is pretty young but he's a he's a real aficionado when he comes to stuff like this, yeah? A Casanova for gullible people, if I may even say. Or just dumb people. Yeah, I'm dumb. <laughs> 26 points. I actually think this one uh, turn not as bad as it did like what do you call it few episodes ago. So it should be fine. As long as I made some sort of you know profit or at least I don't make a deficit from a diamond for doing this. And I actually don't mind running breakout. I actually quite like playing it though. Like if you told me I could play it with no rewards and like it doesn't actually cost anything to play, I, I would. It's a fun mode. I like the buffs, I like you know, being able to use commands I wouldn't like usually use. I'm able to figure out like different strategies. 
place on the stage and whatever. Of course, you know. I mean, it's 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 quite it's quite it's quite, it's quite uh, how do you call it? Fun if you compare it to the normal breakout. But it's basically just oh well, check out the new meta for breakout is yeah. Uh, it's still in so cookie is really good at this area right now. And this treasure and you have to reach this checkpoint to do so and so. And she water it's not bad like if you're a pro or anything. And it's not like it can't be challenging, but at the same time it gets boring after a while, you know, having to do the same thing. That's weird, I thought I heard screaming noises. That was probably coming from outside, I thought it was the game music for a second there. And I was a bit skeptical, because I've heard uh, things, notorious things about the game audio being kinda messed up, and playing like ad music in the middle of nowhere, and even continuing, continuing the music after you're out of the game. But oh well. Hmm, lemon cookie. Alright then. I mean, it's alright. Okay, oh, I'm sure. Cookie Mouse. I don't want to get duplicate buff, honestly. So, I think Cookie Mouse is pretty good. I guess in later stages, we'll have to aim for... What do you call it then? Ah, lemon. And... Lemon and lime. Either that or lime or orange. One of those few. Since we really have the same points now, you know? Okay. Oh, lucky timing on the scale there. But I fell through the crack green. Yeah, I think it's funny how sometimes you just throw yourself into a hole and cut off your health and just wax your distance. It's like... I, I don't know why. I'm pretty sure I'm not supposed to think about it. I'll go face this way. It reminds me of like that, that, that scene where, you know, people give so much for their jobs and money that they and just sacrifice their health for you know their health their happiness their life for this work that they always just do every day you know having a stable job is nice and everything i suppose it can be depressing yeah i honestly personally would like to not have to work but then again i think you already know that okay there we go let's try again then well, we did get about 5 million more on the second try, so it's not too bad. So, as I was saying earlier, it would be nice if nobody had to work, you know? I mean, I know I say it like this, I actually personally don't mind working. I just don't like the way some people treat like, people who work in menial labor. I'm not sure if that's a thing in your country or not. Um, but over here, it's a, it, it's a, it's kind of a cultural thing. People tend to view people who do new labor as like lesser or doing stuff like that as being degrading, you know, all that stuff. Yes, it's not, it's not nice. You know, I've, I remember reading this story once about some JC student was it? I can't remember. But somebody around that age who was working as an assistant in like a shop in one of the schools and then you know how the like, kids always have to go buy their books before the school season in the school themselves yeah so there was this mom there with her son and then raw like uh i think the op was trying to do her job and calculate the numbers and whatever you know like one of the one of the mothers just pointed at the, at, the, at the girl and then pulled her son away and said, See, ah, if you don't study hard, ah, then you become like this, you know. And you just have to use calculator, you know. Like, using calculator is not a good thing. You're supposed to use your brain. Just, huh. Okay. Yeah, I think it's kind of funny. In a sad way, to be honest. You know? I don't know why it's just funny. I just remember people telling me when I was young that using a calculator, sorry, using a calculator, you know, instead of using a brain, was like something only lazy, stupid people would do. Just, huh. Good for them, I guess. Like, honestly, the no, lady was just doing her job, man. I'm not sure why you want her to do, like, I don't know, top genius mathematics calculations when she's just doing her job. For you, but there's that. Like, mate, the job is a job, you know. It's just, this is not a contest to see whose brain is smarter at taking like calculating math, you know, equations. 
I'm actually saying this more of opinions for the story, on the person that story than myself though. Cause I, I'm stupid man. I use calculator all the time. So I guess it isn't completely wrong. I mean, I'm dumb, you know, like, mushy eyes, mushy brain. I no idea what's happening half the time, so I just use the calculator instead. But you know, that's just a me problem, not everyone's problem. I mean, it's better to generalize. Like, that's how you form, how you call it, prejudices against people in the first place. Like, yes, it's good to be cautious against someone, but you know, to completely just, how do you call it, eliminate them, you know, Ask them off as someone who shouldn't listen to what who's evil. Just because of where they come from it is um, not great, to be honest. Not very nice of you. But we mean, I like. And on this channel, we don't like mean. We like nice people. We like sleeping. We like cats. We like lazing around and being useless. And feeling the weight of my parents' disappointment. <laughs> oh boy, my eyes hurt. You know the thing about- Okay, so, well, just now I had to do this uh, biking thing. Really? And it's like we had two choices. There was- The group was basically split into two parts. People who could cycle, and people who couldn't cycle or weren't confident in cycling, so they would go to the workshop to learn how to cycle. And it's like I already participated in this event last year. And so I really wanted to try something different this time, but I couldn't because, you know, that injury I told you about. Yeah. Because it's a super long distance, you know, to go by the bicycle. And I also don't know whether my legs will just give up halfway or my hands will just start doing their weird shaky things again. If I get too tired or what. And my stamina is just... It's, it's, it's part of the gunk, you know. That's what I'm trying to say. Not great. And I mean, I really did want to do it, but uh, I couldn't, you know. Cause the second, the, the actual one for people who could cycle was just super duper long. I can't do that because of my leg injury and everything, you know. So instead, I had to go with all the how do you call it, other uh, people who just weren't confident, or for whatever reason, you know, didn't want to go on the longer cycling route. And then they made us like we could walk the whole way to this super far away place to practice the cycling. I mean, I guess it's not it's not a bad thing, I suppose. But I didn't like the walking, to be honest. You know, because it's it's like it didn't allow you to ride on a bicycle there. You know, cause they could of course they assume everyone in there was uh, not familiar with bicycle. So you basically you just had to walk all the way there with like this bicycle by your side. And the worst thing about it was that I was just heavy, you know. Like the bike pedal kept on hitting my legs and everything. It was not fun. Bunch of my skin got scratched off after that. But oh well, it is what it is. I uh, kind of my fault for being so stupid with my hands, to be honest. But luckily enough, halfway through though, they, they just realized that it just allowed like the people who could actually cycle to just cycle to the waypoint itself. Of course, only the people who could actually cycle, you know. And that's it. And, like, you can't imagine the relief I felt, bro. It was so nice. You know, you just, you're just walking for like a f an hour and a half, lugging on this big hunk of metal with you that you really want to ride. And you're seeing everybody else riding, but you can't because, just because. And that's it. Oh. Oh, that's great. Was it fun? I, mean, I don't know if it was fun, but it was okay, I guess. I mean, my evaluation of pretty much anything is okay, I guess. So. But I did say on a rating of okay, I guess, to okay, yeah, okay. I think it would be a uh, okay. It wasn't bad. Just don't get anything here, there we go. Dear, my mouth's getting a little bit dry from all this talk. It's so true, anyone? It's so true. I'm just gonna take a little break after just drink some water. There we go. Alright, but let's try again first. Well, that didn't go so well. Hehe, <laughs> full 17 million points off. Oh, what's failure? What a bunch of free tries. <gasps> my dear Lemon. Alright. I'm actually kinda surprised to see him there. You know? Like, he almost never appears when you want this guy to. But oh boy, let's do this. Where is... I... Okay, we got the, we got the HP potion, let's go. Okay. Well, it's great that I get 11 though, he destroys everything on screen. It's amazing and great. 
and I love lemon because he's OP and overpowered and he's just fun to play okay I like having big points big number number me to scream if you got if you get what I mean you know okay one two three there you go I mean he's just perfect for the stage here yeah. like an absolute magnetic aura and his blast is also terribly fast his pet provides a blast and he also has a magnetic uh, shield which makes it so that when you're using blasts you don't miss out on as many points as you would usually do although right now it doesn't seem like my enough because the super big downside to this is of course your RNG you know? oh oh my god okay I got a bit nervous there for a second my arm just had this weird pingo pain for me not sure why like something weird on it that reminds me you know last night not last night this morning I just woke up a bunch of it's like bites on me, I have no idea where they came from. I mean, I'm not terribly surprised. Huh, I'm not sure if they're mosquito bites or any bites though. It's like, uh, but I still don't like them. Anyways, still not great. Bad mosquito. I remember wasn't there that thing. Oh, there's a lemon from there, so. Okay, anyways, this just goes to show how OP lemon is. Anyway, <laughs> it's for. It reminds me of this, like, thing where they basically just. Uh, did a bunch of bioengineering on a bunch of like what mosquitoes and made it so like when they mate with other mosquitoes these other mosquitoes become uh, infertile and be unable to hatch or have any more eggs or anything and then I guess there are some people who are like it's a bit unethical you know cause you shouldn't pamper with nature and a lot, a lot of other people are also very thankful for it cause less mosquito equals the less problem and you know it's the like, we always have this uh, dengue season around some time of the year. And I mean, it's pretty dangerous, you know. I live in Asia and it's quite dingy here. I think that we mostly get probably just like, either malaria or it's dengue. But dengue is the biggest uh, disease propagated by mosquitoes here. So we always have these things about like health inspections and people like, coming in to check your home to see if you have left any. Uh, bottles or buckets of water for mosquitoes nesting. I mean, it's a thing. I can't remember if they find you, if they find something that violates the well, whatever you're supposed to do there. But eh, I guess there's also the fact that mosquitoes are just everywhere. You know, you can be a part of anything, and whether you like it or not, they're just, they're just gonna breathe. Mm, I don't like them. I don't like the noises they make either. It's very hard to call it. Uh, grating on the ear. It makes me feel like it's your whenever when I hear it for some reason. One, two, three. Alright, HP potion, here we go. Also, I forgot to use my shoes. I just kind of. Mm. Alright then. There we go. Yes. One, two, one, two. There we go. 889 million. Let's try again. This is fun. There we go. A nice solid second place with our dear lemon and our comrades here. I say hello and a thank you and a goodbye. Thank you for your hard work, my mates. Uh, um, thanks for watching and love you.